morning, everybody. Today we are going to talk about the TK procedure for an ANOVA. We are going to compare multiple means using the TK procedure for ANOVA. So without further ado, I'll share my screen with you. Using a, it's called Chucky Kramer multiple comparison procedure to test which means are significantly different. Problem a researcher wishes to determine whether there is any difference in the weight gains of athletes following one of the three special diets. The weight gains in pounds are shown at alpha equal to 0 0.05 and the researcher conclude that there is a difference in diets. If so, which diets are significantly different from each other. So there are three diets, uh, so three treatments, diet A, diet B, and diet C. We will enter the data from the three different data sets in L1, L2, and L3. Diet A in L1, diet B in L2, diet C in L3. Then we will do stat calc 1, list is L1, calculate the sample mean x bar equal to 5, n equal to 4. Repeat the procedure for L2, x bar is 10.167, n equal to 6. And then again for L3, x bar is 4.5, n equal to 4. So the null hypothesis is mu1 equal to mu2 equal to mu3. Alternate, at least one of the means is different. Then we press the stat button, test, scroll down to ANOVA. Left parenthesis is L1, comma. L1 is second one, comma, is on top of seven. Then L2 is second two, comma. L3 is second three, and close the parenthesis and enter. The test statistic F is 7.74. P is 0 0.008, which is less than alpha equal to 0 0.05. Decision reject 80. That means that alpha equal to 0 0.05. There's enough evidence to support the alternate, which states that at least one of the views is different. The question now is which mean is significantly different. So for that, we have to calculate the 95% TK interval between x1 bar minus x2 bar. 95% is like a sort of 95% confidence interval for the difference in the means. And the formula for that is in parenthesis x1 bar minus x2 bar plus minus q times square root of mean square error, which came from the ANOVA test, divided by 2 in parenthesis 1 over 4 because there are 4 samples in diet A and plus 1 over 6, 6 samples in that B, close the parenthesis, okay? And we plug in the value of x1 bar minus x2 bar, 5 minus 10.1.67. Why do we get the key Q value? Q value is usually in a textbook, okay? It's the studentized range used in calculation for the TK interval, and it depends on degrees of freedom in the error. In our case, I have noted the degrees of freedom in the error in the step six is 11, mean square error is 6.53, okay? So degrees of freedom mean 11, and we're interested in the 95% confidence interval Q, critical value is 3.82, okay? And degrees of freedom of error is 11. So you plug in that 3.82 times square root of 6.53, which is mean square error divided by two, in parenthesis is one four, four is the sample size in diet A plus one sixth, six is the sample size in diet B. If we do the calculation correctly, it is minus 5.167 plus minus 4.455. So if we do the negative 5.167 minus 4.455, we get minus 9.62, which is the lower boundary. And if you do 5 minus 5.167 plus 4.455, you get the upper boundary, which is minus 0.71. Notice both boundaries are negative, which means x1 bar is less than x3 bar. We repeat the calculation for the 95% TK interval for x2 bar minus x3 bar. Okay. Q will remain the same. Okay. So we are comparing two and three. 
sample size of uh, uh, your treatment to a diet B is one six, and sample size of treatment uh, three or diet C is four, so it is one six plus one four, and the interval works out as five point six six seven plus minus four point four five five. So you do the minus first, you get one point two one, which is a lower boundary. You do the plus next time five point six six seven plus four point five four five five. You get the upper boundary ten point one two. Notice both the boundaries are positive. It is on the right hand side of zero on the number line. So what does that mean? That means x2 bar is always greater than x3 bar. So we have compared x1 and x2. We found out x1 bar is less than x3 bar. We have also found out x2 bar is greater than x3. Now we will do the comparison between x1 bar and x3 bar. And that interval is minus. 4.382, 5 5.38 calculated in step 9. Notice 0 is inside the interval. Okay, that means uh, uh, x1 bar can be equal to x3 bar. However, we have found out that x2 bar is always greater than x1 bar and x2 bar is also greater than x3 bar. So, x2 bar is different from x1 bar and x3 bar. Therefore, the means are not equal as we have concluded before because we have rejected the null hypothesis. Okay. From this TK calculation, we found out that X2 bar is the mean of treatment 2, which is diet B, is significantly different from the mean of diet A and diet C, which we did by the TK procedure calculation. Okay. I will stop here today. Thanks for watching. And if you have any question, please write me a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Again, please subscribe to my channel because I come back every week with new problems solved by TI-84. Okay. Thanks again. Take care. And I'll see you next time.